What makes a shooter special? Look at Steph Curry, a skinny undersized guard from Davidson College, who later changed the game of basketball forever. And what if I told you this seemingly unathletic 5'8 guard would go on to become college basketball's all-time leading scorer and a future WNBA superstar? The Curry comparison isn't anything out of the norm for Washington product Kelsey Plum. She was handed the keys to Mike Neighbors up tempo offense as a true freshman and ran with it, posting scoring averages of 20 or more points over a four-year span. Now, where does Plum's 2016-17 season stack up against some of the best three-point shooters in recent memory? Near the top, as very few players are capable of combining efficiency with superb volume from both a three and charity stripe. ESPN Sports Science took a deeper look into the science behind Plum's storied shooting campaign in a short 2017 video. Plum's shot starts from the ground up. Using a distinct hop step, she's able to set her feet and get the ball above her head in just 23 hundredths of a second. That's about as fast as an average human's ability to react. From there, she pushes off the ground with about 350 pounds of force. Now because her shot is already locked and loaded, more of the energy moving up through her kinetic chain can be converted to the vertical velocity of the ball. And because she can flick her wrist nearly as fast as NBA MVP Steph Curry, she's able to keep her mechanics consistent from almost any spot on the floor. Shooting a basketball is an art in itself, from the intellectual properties of shot perception and feel to a player's foot placement, power transfer, wrist action, and follow through. But the latter two micro attributes can be summed up with the word touch, which describes the trajectory velocity, and overall aesthetics of a jump shot. Now that we laid the groundwork, let's divide the types of shot making into three somewhat distinct categories. Stationary, movement, and self-creation. Stationary shooting is your traditional, balanced, no dribble jump shot. For example, a spot up jumper from either corner, lifting to the wing, or above the break. Alicia Clark is one of the best at this in the W. She shot a league best 48% in 2019, with 90% of those being assisted. Movement shooting can be broken into two subcategories off handoff and off screen. To start with the former, Marine Johannes is one of the best in the league at scoring off funky movement patterns and angles. The same goes for star rookie Ryan Howard, who can shoot off flare screens, down screens, and floppy sets, to name a few. Self-creation is the holy grail of shooting. The best of the best in the WNBA can get their own out of ball screens or isolation and bend the defense with their shooting gravity. Let's go back in time to Kelsey Plum as a WNBA draft prospect. As a stationary shooter, Plum's quickfire ability allows her to capitalize ahead of strong closeouts by the defense. Just see this possession. Oklahoma attempts to tag the roller in Chantel Osahor. Plum realizes this if she lifts to the top of the key, causing number two to make a late rotation onto the deadly sharpshooter, ending with a bucket. If we watch this play one more time in full, notice how Plum flips her hips and hops into a three in one singular motion. Understanding Plum's lack of volume as a movement shooter warrants some context on her role with the neighbor's offense. Plum operates as a heliocentric creator with Osahor and McDonald utilizing their polar opposite skill sets as secondary and tertiary options. Then the rest of its roster was filled out with wing shooters and defenders. Plum's always so under control and balanced with her jumper, limiting her need to utilize all funky movement attempts in her arsenal. The pillar of Plum's shot creation is her ability to manipulate the drop defender and ball screens, specifically from the mid-range. Even without a screen, Plum is agile enough to split doubles and rise into Fallon extended pull-up jumpers. Now this is my favorite part of her college tape to dive into the off-dribble, three-point space creation. Let's slow this one down here. Plum crosses left, crosses back right, and takes a short side step to create substantial space from her defender. If you made it this far, odds are you're a basketball fan, so please subscribe, like, and all that stuff. It'd be greatly appreciated. I'm not specifically fond of player comparisons as he can paint an unreliable pitcher, but for reference, Plum's role in college was awfully similar to eventual NBA star Trey Young. Both were given the keys early as heliocentric light creators and had to find different avenues to, to success, given their height limitations. In baseball, the 2080 scale is used to grade players by the categories of their game, such as power, glove, etc. etc. The talented PD Webb put a twist on this to measure shooting talent in basketball. 
As you can see here, the five categories or tools are broken into catch and shoot, off dribble, movement, volume, and flow. Now you may ask, where does Kelsey Plum rank on the scale? Well, in my personal opinion, her catch and shoot, off dribble, volume, and flow are all worthy of an 80 score. The other is movement, which earns an average score of 40 due to an unreliably small college sample size. Leading back to my question at the beginning of this video, versatility is the main skill that makes a player a special shooter, but it's also not super simplified and pigeonholes you into a single category though, because versatility can come in so many ways. Um, maybe you're a spot up shooter, maybe you're shooting off movement like Marine Johannes, or maybe you're a uh, self-creating bucket getter like Kelsey Plum, Enrique Gumbawale, etc, etc.